So before we even start our journey to understanding and working with pointers in C, we have to kind of come to terms with the mental model. We have to have like a mental imagery or a visualization of what is going on when we talk about pointers. And that is what essentially I'm going to present. My proposal is that we have to we have to think of the memory in certain ways, the way it's arranged, the way data can be accessed, such that you know the pointers make sense, right? And what pointers are, how to declare them, we'll come to that in the next video. But let's start with a mental model. And this model is the one that we'll use over and over again and again for the rest of the course. This is that fundamental. If you don't understand this, my request is that you watch this couple of times again and do not proceed further until you understand this. So the idea is that this is memory, right? This chunk here is memory. And my claim is there are bits in the memory, obviously, right? So let me just quickly draw bits. So each box here is a bit, one bit. And my claim is that the width, uh, the width of the memory in this case, um, uh, is or the bunch of bits that we have uh, are eight bits or one byte, right? And my claim is that when we access the memory, when we are wanting to request data, the minimum number of bits that we can request uh, would be one byte. You cannot request for three bits, you cannot request for five bits, you cannot request for seven. Anytime you request for bits, uh, you will get at the minimum, at the very minimum, one byte or eight bits. So the memory is divided in bytes, like an array of bytes, a sequence of bytes. And so, you know, I'll not draw, but these are eight bits, these are eight bits, these are eight bits, and so on and so forth. And each byte has a number associated with it, which is uh, which the memory subsystem or the memory related circuits can understand. So each num each memory uh, byte has an address associated with it, so to speak, right? A way to reference it. So for example, um, this we will say is the zeroth byte. This is the first byte. This is the second byte. This is the third byte and so on and so forth. And depending on, you know, the size of the memory, uh, this can go on. So if this was like 4 GB memory, this would be like, you know, whatever, uh, the 2 to the power 31 minus 1 location, something like that, right? So the idea then is memory is an array of bytes and we can request for at least one byte. We can read or write one byte. All right. All right. So then let me draw, make this a little more complex. Right. And then there is like some circuit here that understands which region of the memory or which byte of the memory that we want to fiddle with. In terms of interacting with the memory, my, my proposal is we should imagine two sets of bus. Oh, okay, this one's wrong. Two sets of buses. And buses are nothing but a bunch of wires. So wires are the way in which you communicate um, with the memory circuits essentially and the buses in you know a proposal is that there are two sets of buses and uh, I'll just name both of them but let me just draw them and then there is one separate wire all right so this this is one set of bus and this is another set of bus we call these buses instruction buses and I'll come to uh why and what that is and this we call the data buses okay some nomenclature for communication between us so two sets of buses let's take a look at the instruction buses so in the instruction buses the first bus that we have is the instruction address bus okay. and the second bus that we have is the instruction Okay, and we can actually say this is instruction address bus. So recall that a CPU would require instructions to follow and execute a program. 
and those instructions are also saved in the memory. So there is a dedicated set of bus in our model wherein the CPU will send the address and the memory will take in that address and then whatever happens to be at that address will be sent back on the instruction bus. Right? And if you notice, this is the direction is going out of memory and that's for a reason which is an instruction is always read from the memory. We will not worry as to how the instructions got into the memory in the first place. Let's assume that, you know, by some magic, somebody put it there. Um, uh, you know, that forms like a part of programming the CPUs and things like that, which we'll skip in this course. But imagine that, you know, the code was already there in the memory and we wanted to request instructions. So the address of the instruction is coming on this bus. That's the idea. And then the instruction is sent out towards the CPU on this particular bus, the instruction bus. All right. So if this bus is understood, again, this is just a model. We'll come back to this again and again. The next set of bus that we want to talk about is called the data buses. And then in the data bus, again, we have the data uh, address bus and we have the actual data bus, right? And what this is, is that whenever the CPU wants to read data and data is something that the CPU would manipulate, for example, you know, um, add two numbers. So it needs to save the two numbers, then add them and then save the result. So those kind of numbers are the data. Data is something that the CPU can process, right? And so the request to save and read the data will happen on the data address bus and the data bus. And if you notice the data address bus is going towards the memory and there uh, the data bus here is bi-directional because we can read and write to the memory. We can go ahead and update the bytes here or we can go ahead and check whatever is the value of the bytes here, right? And this last wire here, uh, is to convey whether we want to write the data to the memory or read the memory, uh, read the data from the memory. So this, let's say we call it uh, read bar slash write, meaning if this wire is held at zero, uh, the CPU wants to read data. So memory should send out data on a given address. And if this happens to be one, this line happens to be one, then the data whatever is available on the bus should be written to the address being available right so that's the idea and this model is so fundamental that all our reasonings about pointers uh, will be based on this model and it is so so i can't even stress enough it's so fundamental that if you can remember this you can pretty much reason about anything that has to do with pointers uh, in C language, of course. So uh, my request is, if you haven't understood this, uh, please rewatch this. You know, let this, uh, so to speak, brew in your mind. Uh, you know, be comfortable with this. And once you're comfortable with this, I assure you that you'll be able to reason about pointers um, uh, very, very accurately. Uh, with this, I'll see you in the next one.